stand up for free speech in Canada and around the world, for writers in prison, in exile, or under threat. And we are vigilant when any threat to freedom of expression arises within our own country. So it's about courage, it's about independence. I'm just a reporter out there doing my thing. I have to mention Taurus and Hare. He's, uh, he was an Indo-Canadian publisher who I knew very well. He was first shot and paralyzed in 1988, and then he was assassinated on November 18, 1998, for writing about some of his community's darkest secrets. Air India, I think, is a case of unprecedented mass murder in this country. It has been underreported by the Canadian media, and I will stick with it until there is some real resolution. It gives me the power to continue writing the stories that are hard to write, and the stories that I care very passionately about. Some of our authors this evening flew in from great distances to share their time and their commitment, but they have all been extraordinarily generous. And uh, please join me in thanking Wole Soyinka, Asad Lafizi, Miriam Taves, Wayson Choi, and M.G. Vasanji for lending their uncensored voices in support of Pan Canada. What I'm going to read is, uh, is actually, I'm not sure that it ever will be published, but um, you know, I might, I think I, I might have abandoned the larger uh, piece that it came from, but I always have really liked this particular little scene in the story, and it's, a, it's just uh, a little scene where uh, a mother uh, and her son and, and daughter go in search of uh, the boy's father. One more thing, I and my father very yes, Babuji inquired. Spineless politicians. The Kali Yoga is upon us, my father said non committally. We have to bring back the golden age, age Sahaji exalted Shastri. My father, of course, knew that the golden age would come only after complete destruction of the present age. Mr. Choi, I would hear with the last of my dying senses. <laughs> From one of those young women with a soft, sweet voice, are, are you okay? And a handsome tech student with a firm jaw and strong arms would hold my head in his lap as I lay down. <laughs> a sweeping pain gradually carried me away into that eternal night. No mundane, dragged out, coughing death of operatic arias to for me. My mother died in Tehran and I couldn't go. And, 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 and uh, visit her at their deathbed. And, and, and the idea of loss became an obsession with me. And, and I started, I, I thought that this is the time, the only way that I can retrieve it is to reinvestigate her life and her claims in life. And, and, and then I, I realized that, that loss always presupposes wealth. You must have had something to lose. The only alternative to the void um, is through the truth that fiction gives. Uh, because fiction has, has that courage um, to reveal to us, and it is never a consolation. It is never a consolation, but it is always a protest and a resistance against this void. And therefore, it is always full of hope. So Yinka is regarded by many as Africa's greatest writer, and one of the world's most important dramatists. Harvard professor Henry Louis Gates Jr. described him as a master of the verbal arts and adds, he bears a relation to the poetics of Africa akin to that which Shakespeare bore to England. If I should die outside my borders, bury me wherever I collapse, as long as Sonia Baja, the dictator, still rules that nation, the thought of Bobo Lasso and the, feast, the fear of being brought home, where you I recoiled in horror. Please, please take a moment to sign the pen letter to Russian President Vladimir Putin, calling on his government to undertake a thorough investigation into the murder of Anna Politkovskaya, leading to the identification and punishment of those responsible. 